I would like you, please, uh, to give a warm welcome uh, to somebody who's not a member of our party. He's a member of Parliament for the Conservative Party. But he's coming to have a chat to our conference this afternoon, and I think it'll be interesting to hear what he's got to say, don't you? Yeah. Would you please give a warm welcome to Mark Reckless, Conservative Member of Parliament. Today, I am leaving the Conservative Party and joining UKIP. decisions are never easy. Mine certainly has not been. Many have been the sleepless nights when I have talked it over with my wife and thought about the future of our children. But it is a decision I make from optimism. A decision that is born of belief that Britain can be better. And of my knowledge of how the Westminster parties hold us back, but also of my belief in the fresh start UKIP offers. <laughs> we all know the problem of British politics. People feel disconnected from Westminster. But Disconnected is too mild a word. People feel ignored, taken for granted, overtaxed, overregulated, ripped off, and lied to. <laughs> reason to, because with some honourable exceptions, MPs too often are not local representatives, but agents of a political class. <laughs> Instead of championing their constituents' interests in Westminster, too often they champion their party's interests 
in their constituencies. We have even evolved a, a particular language to talk about the way in which MPs betray their constituents. They are called brave or mature, realistic or pragmatic. Yet all those words are euphemisms for one thing, which is to break their promises to their constituents. Well, I remember the, the promises I made to my constituents in Rochester and Stroud at the last election, and I intend to keep them. <laughs> I promised we would cut immigration. I promised we would cut the deficit so we could reduce taxes. I promised that we would decentralize power, not least over, over housing numbers. I promised we would have a more open and accountable politics. And I promised, above all, to help get our country out of the European Union. <laughs> And shall I tell you something? I've found that it is impossible to keep those promises as a Conservative, and that is why I'm joining UKIP. Thank you for making me so welcome. <laughs> but I, I should say, this is, this is not a decision I've taken lightly, because I, I had been a, a Conservative for as long as I could remember, and I have many friends throughout that party, both in, in Parliament and in the constituency. I, I hope that some of them will remain friends. And I don't, uh, indeed, um, and I don't, uh, I don't question the patriotism of any of our conservative supporters, volunteers, and members that have worked with me before. But I do feel that the leadership of the Conservative Party is part of the problem that is holding our country back. <laughs> Turn to those promises that I made to Rochester and Stroud. I, like every Conservative candidate across the country at the 2010 election, promised that we would cut net immigration from hundreds of thousands every year to just tens of thousands. Yet the reality is that 243,000 more people came to our country last year than left back up to the levels we saw under Labour. Now, I'm not someone who is always and everywhere against immigration. It, it, it takes energy and guts to cross half the world to try and find a better future for yourself and your family. And I believe in a, a, a sensible uh, a amount of legal controlled migration. But if, uh, if we are to ask my constituents and constituents across the country to support some immigration, then in return, they need to, to believe and understand that we have control over who comes to our country and in what numbers, and at the moment, we do not have any sense of that.
the in insanity of our immigration rules means that uh, a second generation Britain mm -hmm. wanting to, to, to bring granny over for a wedding, still less if they want to get married to someone from abroad themselves, will face huge difficulties. Yet they will see an open door to immigration to anyone from the European Union. Now, now, does anyone, left or right, genuinely support an immigration system where we turn away the best and brightest from our Commonwealth, people with links and family here, in order to make room for unskilled immigration from Southern and Eastern Europe? <laughs> I promise to cut immigration while treating people fairly and humanely. I cannot keep that promise as a Conservative. I can keep it as UKIP. promised that we would make government live within its means, like the rest of us had to. Yet we will see in this Parliament, in just five years, a Conservative-led government adding more to our national debt than even Labour managed in 13 years. And two weeks ago, the three Westminster leaders promised to give £1,600 extra to every Scot indefinitely. As well as fairness to everyone else in our country, I promised to restore, to help restore order to our public finances. Yet I find I cannot do that as a Conservative, but I can do it as UKIP. I also promised to put my constituents' interests first and return power from the centre to the locality. In particular, we promised we would do away with Labour's top-down housing targets that were forcing us to concrete over our green fields. Yeah. Yet now I find, under government pressure, our Conservative Council in Medway has increased our housing targets from the 815 a year we saw under Labour to a minimum of 1,000 every year. Despite the promised EU referendum, it is assumed that current rates of open-door EU immigration will just continue for 20 years. Now, in my constituency, that means giving permission to build a new town of 5,000 houses in a bird sanctuary on our Hu Peninsula. Despite it having almost the highest level of environmental protection as a site of special scientific interest. If we allow building there, where will it stop? <laughs> I, I promise to protect our rural Hu Peninsula. As a Conservative, I cannot do that. I can do it as UKIP. I also promise to help make our government more, more open and accountable so that MPs answered outwards to their constituents and not inwards to their party whips. 
Now, David Cameron and his government, they promised to reduce the number of MPs, to put Parliament in charge of its own timetable, to allow free votes in bill committees, to have 200 proper postal primaries, and to bring in a right of recall to allow constituents to sack their MPs. Yet I'm afraid to tell you, not one of these promised reforms has been delivered. I promise political reform. I cannot keep that as a Conservative. I can keep that promise as UKIP. And of course, I promise to give people a vote on leaving the European Union. When I voted that way, along with 110 MPs from various parties, there was a three-line whip against us from all three of the major Westminster Party leaderships. Since then, David Cameron has promised a referendum. <laughs> but I'm afraid I have reluctantly reached the view that he is doing so purely as a device. He has already preordained his intended outcome, namely continued membership of the EU on something very close to the present terms. Everything else is for show. What the Prime Minister has in mind, and it's, it's, it's not even a, a secret at, at Westminster, is, is modelled on what Harold Wilson did in 1975, a bogus renegotiation followed by a loaded referendum. David Cameron and uh, all the levels of government, back with taxpayers' cash, would pretend that the terms of membership had been radically reformed, when in reality little or nothing had changed. <laughs> a, a referendum should be a, a solemn and binding commitment a reminder to politicians that, that we work for the rest of the country. It shouldn't be a, a party political trick, a way to paper over the cracks, or just a way to buy yourself time. In this hall, we want a straight referendum, an honest referendum, in or out, no fudge, no conjuring trick. No sleight of hand, no fake renegotiation, no pretended new terms, just a clear choice between EU membership and being an independent country, trading with Europe, but governing ourselves.
vote for UKIP, every MP for UKIP means a better chance of getting that fair, straight referendum. If you vote UKIP, you get UKIP. stay straight in our referendum. I can't keep that promise as a Conservative. I can keep it as UKIP. <laughs> and when we, when we get that referendum, I want us to make our case in warm and optimistic language. I want to make the case for British independence. We are not backward looking or gloomy, still less xenophobic. The only, the only nostalgia I see is the nostalgia of those Euro enthusiasts who cling to their 1950s vision of the United States of Europe. It, in almost every other field of politics, we have moved on. We no longer believe, as we did in the 1950s, that big conglomerates are the future, that the expansion of government is benign, or that economies need to be planned. But the EU remains a child of its time, wedded to its five-year plans, its unelected commissioners, its common workplace standards, its fixed prices, its corporatism, its lobbying cartels. That is why Europe is the world's only declining continent. It is therefore not nostalgia that makes us Eurosceptics, it's optimism. We understand how much greater Britain could be if we raised our eyes to the horizons. Yeah. All of you in the hall already know this, but I want our friends watching through the media to understand it too. UKIP is a positive party with a positive vision. We believe in a global Britain, a Britain which is prosperous, independent and free. We believe in a Britain of opportunity we will be proud to pass to our children. Conclude, I want to invite you to come to my constituency. <laughs>some people here know what I mean by that. <laughs> and I may need you even more than Douglas because Rochester and Stroud is not Clacton. Matthew Goodwin, the leading academic to study UKIP, says that Rochester and Stroud is not even in the top 100 conservative constituencies vulnerable to UKIP. I am, I am proud to represent many ambitious professionals, aspirational families and young commuters. By the way, if any of you are watching this at home, I hope you'll be voting for me. <laughs>
Rochester, we have a, a castle and a, a cathedral. We have a, a lovely high street full of, of independent shops. We have French patisseries, Italian delicatessens. We're, we're, we're less than an hour from, from London, just, just two hours from France. Matthew Paris would love it. <laughs> Just as Douglas Carswell answers to his constituents in Clacton, I answer to those constituents I serve in Rochester and Stroud. They, they are the boss, and if I am to seek to represent them under different colours, I hope in a party that is closer to their values, then I should ask their permission. Resign my seat in Parliament, trigger a by election. I will, I will resign my seat in Parliament, trigger a by election, and your national executive allowing, stand for UKIP. one of you applauding me in the hall now to come and to join my campaign. Because if we can win in Rochester and Stroud as well as in Clacton and perhaps here in South Yorkshire, then we can show that UKIP can break through across the country and we will show once and for all that a vote for UKIP is a vote for UKIP. which can do for our politics what modernity has done for our society, a UKIP which is about hope and optimism, a UKIP which can safeguard our children's future, and a UKIP which believes we are more than a star on somebody else's flag. Yeah. 